Did you know that the World Bank estimates that the annual worth of bribes paid in procurement is in excess of $1 trillion? As we know, governments spend a huge amount of their operation budgets on public procurement, and consequently, ineffective public procurement can result in a huge loss of enormous investments, which, of course, can be disastrous to the survival and growth of any economy. Well, our next speaker this afternoon is Mutasim Gadur. He's the Strategic Sourcing Manager of the Qatar Foundation. He holds a Master's Law in Corruption, Law and Governance from the University of Sussex and has had his thesis published in the Q Science Connect journal. Now, he says that corruption in public procurement has far-reaching implications. Not only does it weaken national institutions, but it also significantly increases corporate costs. It erodes trust and it discourages foreign investment. Now, of course, public procurement is one of the most important aspects of a country's development, but it is also an area where corruption is prevalent. So this afternoon, he's gonna be taking us through the finer details, looking at the detrimental economic and social impact of uh, corruption in the procurement sector, and most importantly, explaining where artificial intelligence can play a vital role in preventing this. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mutasa Magado to the stage. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so delighted to be in Riyadh once again. Uh, this time to share some thoughts about a topic of my professional and personal interest, which is corruption in public procurement and artificial intelligence. I would like also to thank SIPS for giving us such a great opportunity to gather and discuss important procurement topics. Uh, this presentation has two topics, I would say, uh, or subtopics. The first one is corruption in public procurement and uh, then we'll talk about artificial intelligence and the opportunities that AI can provide us with in preventing corruption in public procurement. So, let's start with some definitions. The word corruption in English was derived from the Latin word corrompere, which means to bribe. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime defines corruption as the use of public power for private gain, and the World Bank defines corruption as the abuse of public power, public office for private gain. And we can see that both definitions use the term public, either public power or public office. And then Transparency International, being one of the largest organizations globally fighting corruption, stretched the definition of corruption beyond the public office or public power, and it defined corruption as the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. And this is actually my favorite uh, definition for corruption, being studying corruption for the last couple of years. And according to Transparency International, corruption erodes trust, hampers economic development, and further worsens discrimination, poverty, social division, and environmental crisis. It's worth noting that although corruption flourished in the past few decades, but it's an old problem that was mentioned in several old civilizations. For example, the leader of Babylon State, 2400 years BC, started a set of legislative and uh, governmental reforms to fight what is known now as, as corruption. Now let's talk about public procurement. So the OECD defines public procurement as the purchase by governments and state-owned enterprises of goods, services, and works. And similar to the general definition of corruption, uh, corruption in public procurement or public procurement corruption is described as the abuse of power for private gain in public procurement. And going back to Transparency International, alongside with the monetary loss, public procurement corruption also distorts competition lowers the quality and safety of public projects and erodes public trust in government. The most detrimental cost of public procurement corruption is not the amount of 
money paid in bribes. It's rather the social and economic impact that exceeds the amount of bribes paid in terms of lost or abused resources. For example, a company responsible for constructing a mega project might not be the best technical commercial combination. It's rather the best briber or the one with the strongest ties with the government. This will definitely lead to an inflated prices and a project that doesn't meet the public uh, safety and quality parameters. The OECD states that corruption risk exists in almost every tendering stage, including needs identification, tenders design and preparation, bidding and contract award, and execution. And this makes it even harder to predict and to curb. And this also has different shapes and forms. The most famous one is the bribes, and then you have the collusion, and even the supplier's agreement, where a supplier doesn't perform according to the contract parameters is considered as a form of corruption. But why this issue is important, why we are discussing corruption in public procurement in such big event? According to the World Bank, public procurement is the second largest component of public spend after salaries. It accounts for around 15 to 20 percent of public spend globally and up to 70 percent in developing countries. And talking about the World Bank, a World Bank study revealed that 50 to 70 percent of public spend is tied with public procurement, although it might not be a direct public procurement spend. The World Bank also states that the economy growth of several countries is threatened by corruption in public procurement. According to the UNDB, public procurement typically accounts for 10 to 15 percent of the GDP of developed countries and 20 to 70 percent of the GDP of developing countries. And actually, the public procurement globally estimated at 10 trillion dollars. The public procurement has a high risk of corruption due to the significant amount of money that incentivizes corrupt behaviors. The OECD also studied the bribery cases reported from February 1999 to June 2014 and determined that more than 50% of the international bribery instances were cured to gain uh, contracts in, in public procurement. It's actually 57% as shown in the, in the graph. And due to the massiveness of the financial flows involved in public procurement, OECD has identified public procurement as the government activity most subject to corruption. The World Bank, the United Nations, Transparency International, and the Asian Development, Development Bank, they all stated that corruption is unfortunately increasing in the public procurement, especially in developing countries. Now, after we recognized the impact of corruption in public procurement. Uh, let us move to the second part, which is AI. And this slide actually summari summarizes main AI technologies. And in the coming few slides, we're going to talk about systems that are machine learning enabled, together with some other features from, from AI technologies. But we are procurement professionals. We are not AI professionals. So without going deep into technicalities, AI simply allows machines to learn and solve problems almost like humans. Humans normally supervise uh, AI systems to support good decisions and prevent bad ones, but recent AI systems were developed to learn and solve problems without humans' supervision. So before discussing real examples of AI usage in preventing corruption in public procurement, let us talk about some AI capabilities. AI can analyze vast amount of data to identify irregularities or suspicious patterns, things like that might indicate corruption, things like inflated prices, for example. And by flagging these irregularities, AI will allow experts to step in and conduct further investigations. These large data sets 
were difficult to analyze manually if done by humans, or at least time consuming. And this gives the AI the ability to predict corruption incidences which were impossible to predict previously. AI also can aggregate inaccessible information by humans, like the ones published on the internet and on the online catalogs, and cross-check these informations, information and raise flags around potential corruption. And due to the AI abilities, Oxford Insights states that AI is the next frontier in anti-corruption. So, the question is, how can artificial intelligence play a role in preventing corruption in public procurement? We'll see this in the coming two slides. So, of course, there are many factors beyond uh, these steps, but this is generally how it works. These are the steps for how AI can predict corruption in public procurement. So, first, the programmer who's teaching an anti-corruption algorithm would collect and clean data. This is the first and the most important part. Then the programmer labels the outputs as corrupt or non-corrupt, and this might include things like single sourcing or specifications towards specific product, or, for example, short time for bit submission. The programmer then trains the machine by following a particular machine learning algorithm, determining the relationship between inputs and outputs, considering the programmer's definition for corruption, because there is no globally unified cor uh, definition for corruption. So what is considered as corruption here might not be considered as corruption elsewhere. And accordingly, the machine acts as a protective or monitoring tool to flag the conditions that will likely result into corruption. And then humans will step in and do further investigations. Uh, let us have some real examples of, of red flags of possibility for corruption in specific tendering stage, I would say, or procurement stages. So, for example, specifications toward specific product. And this happens in the needs identification stage. And the AI can play a preventive role uh, in, in preventing corruption right from the beginning, especially with the ability of accessing inaccessible information by humans. The unusual short bidding time might be another potential red flag for possible collusion, as it leaves only short time for other suppliers to bid and make it harder for them, definitely. Whether the same supplier always get awarded or whether the winning bid is always the last submitted bid. Things like high number of administratively rejected bids or small number of correct bids. All these instances can be identified by the one who's teaching the machine. And then the AI can play a role in raising a red flag around any potential uh, corruption instances. In this slide, we'll go quickly through some AI uh, usage in preventing corruption in public procurement. So we have, for example, Tozoro, introduced by Transparency International Ukraine, is an AI tool that was trained to recognize bids with high risk of corruption in Ukraine's public procurement. And as a result of that, uh, Dozoro improved the effectiveness of the investigations conducted by uh, experts and authorities in Ukraine. And as a result of that, uh, this is interesting, uh, in the last two years, uh, Ukraine has moved up in the Corruption Perception Index by Transparency International, despite the ongoing war. Another tool is the Hungarian Red Flag System, which was developed to detect risks in public procurement and present early warnings accordingly. And the last example is Microsoft Anti-Corruption and Solutions Acts, which is now being piloted in Mexico to prevent corruption in public procurement. Further information, facts, numbers, case studies about this topic can be found on my published study, Corruption in Public Procurement. Can e-procurement and artificial intelligence make a difference in Africa? But one last important thing before we close, uh, this presentation uh, is the challenges and considerations while using AI in preventing corruption in public procurement. So to be used effectively, AI should be accompanied with quality data as the AI's effectiveness depends on the availability of high quality data. This is the first step. And without high quality data, the AI would be useless. Legal limitations in many cases 
there are some legal limitations for introducing AI in preventing corruption in public procurement. And the last challenge is the governance challenges as implementing AI in preventing corruption in public procurement introduces also governance risks that need to be considered. So while AI can enhance uh, corruption detection and prevention, it must be used wisely, considering the quality data, uh, the legal limitations, and governance challenges. So, the question again, can AI play a role in preventing corruption in public, public procurement? The answer would be yes. However, expectations should be reasonable in this stage, and it cannot be left solely to the machine. Uh, I would also say that collaborative efforts between AI and human experts would lead to more effective measures, anti-corruption measures in general, and in public procurement in specific. Thank you very much for listening. Shukran. Thank you very much.